jump wire. All I did was put a female spade in. I'm gonna plug into that number two port. I'm gonna put a little alligator on the back of the car uh, back and see if we start charging. Nine four nine. Not running. So it's gotta be the alternator. All right guys, pull the alternator, see what the hell's going on here. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see that or not, but this is where we hold the brushes in place. And I'm putting my little keeper in there and I can feel that thing just flopping around. So I don't know if the spring popped out or what. And as you can see in the picture there, it should just be a solid block in the way. So I think something happened in there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these four screws and slide this all apart again and see what's going on with them brushes and see if that's why we ain't getting charging. All right, I'll be back. Yeah, guys, I don't know. Took it apart. Got it back in there, same shit. It's just hanging out at 11.8. On or not. It's not even going down. So it's like something's trickling out, but I don't get it. I don't get it. Even if you self-excite that thing, it should give some kind of voltage and it's not. I tried it. Doesn't change anything. You see it flicker. So it's like, I don't know. I've heard stories about these alternators being finicky when you hook up the battery that you gotta hook up the, the positive first and then the negative. And uh, I hooked this up negative first and then positive. Did I surge it? Did it cause a problem? I don't know. I've never never had that problem. So I don't know what the answer is. Now I got a painted case I can't return, right? So what do I do? Buy another alternator and completely gut this one and completely gut the next one and uh, swap the internals. That sounds fun. It's always something, guys. Always something that shouldn't be. Brand new alternator should charge. Granted, I took it apart, but I didn't take it apart apart just move the brushes when you rebuild them you move the brushes you know I don't even I don't know maybe I need to get this thing completely and just make sure the wiring's all good something didn't get pulled apart when I was playing around in there the factory shitty uh, solder point or something make me a little upset get tired of working on stuff I'm like you guys you know I'm not a mechanic I don't do this for a living I do it for enjoyment. I'm not enjoying it right now. <laughs> just like you guys. Sometimes you just got to walk away for a week. That's why there isn't content coming out every week. I can't put content out every week. One, it's expensive. And to work on this stuff every week, have something new to show you, a new car to work on, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm just bringing you along for my ride. Maybe showing you a few things along the way that you didn't know. Maybe showing you a few ways to not do things. And maybe bringing a little entertainment. Um but it's on my normal time of being a, a guy working on his own stuff in his own time, just like you in your garages. You don't, you don't finish a project every week, do you? You don't finish part of a project every week. I mean, maybe I should, maybe I should break this into four sections so I can bring you a sh more shorter content as I'm moving along, because right now, whew, I'm flustered. I wish I had another alternator I could try. I could just hook up and, oh, look at that, it works. 
All right, I'm gonna see if I can find the receipt around here and see what it's gonna to take to. I'll be back when I'm back. Another day, another frustration, right? Sorry to be a downer. A little bummed. That's life. That's truth. Just sharing with you how I feel. The next day. All right, guys. I tried and tried. And that alternator was junk. So I ran over to O'Reilly's. Still under warranty because I only bought it two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, whatever it was. And uh, had them test it to make sure I wasn't doing something stupid. And sure enough, it was junk. But I had it all painted. So talked to the manager and he said, well, you know, we'll give you a new one. I said, I don't want to paint another one. It's a whole other day of wasting around and, you know, the can of paint for this is expensive. And I said, do you mind? I mean, I brought my tools with. Do you mind if I just gut the new one, put it into my painted case, and then uh, you guys can test it and make sure it works before I leave? And then you know it's all good? And he's like, yeah, I don't care. He seemed a little perturbed, but he was like, yeah, I, I don't care, whatever. So I rebuilt it right there on the countertop. <laughs> Wish I could have filmed it, but uh, not able to. And uh, they tested it, and it tested fine. So now I hooked it all up, and then and fingers crossed, it's back in. And I did make a ground wire, just in case that was a part of the problem from here. Usually they ground through, but with the paint and all that, and blah, blah, blah. Um, grounded from here to the mounting bracket underneath it, and just uh, put a 10-gauge wire in there. And uh, I got her all lined up. Everything's lined up good. I got my battery tester over there, and uh, we're gonna fire it up and see what happens. Excuse the reflection. Oh, well, the gen light went off on the dash. That's a positive. feels good after yeah just after getting beat up and beat up on that stuff you know, brand new alternator doesn't work I wonder if it's something you did not much I could do I mean I didn't I didn't disassemble that whole thing other than the brushes had to be put back in but you know you take it apart like that it's simple it's how you rebuild them for crying out loud you tell me you know there's nothing to it and uh, maybe I hooked it up wrong, like I said, running the battery back and forth, different, you know, putting the positive on last instead of first and blah, blah, blah. But I've never had that happen to me before. So I don't know if it's just cheap junk. Um, I'll tell you one thing, though, when I was rebuilding that one, I took the one apart that they were going to give me for the new one. They had the brushes in backwards. Um, professional alternator guys, you know, the brushes are a square block this long and they have a copper cable that comes out of them. And the copper cable is towards one end and they had that copper cable on the wrong wrong side. And the reason being that it's wrong is those, those uh, carbon brushes, they slowly wear down and get smaller and smaller because the, and the, the spring keeps pushing them towards the, towards the stator that they're running on. And if, the copper cables right up towards the end it's just going to wear down in in like a, a year and then it's going to cut the wire the workmanship and some you know might have been made on a friday and they were hurry to get home but they put the brushes in backwards wouldn't hurt the running runnability but longevity would be hurt so who knows what was wrong with that other one could have been something else you know made on a friday and done wrong so anyways enough of me yammering on and on uh Next thing is, I gotta figure out 
these tie rod ends so I can get the, the alignment. And then we can go for a ride. Yeah. So today is the day I'm going to... I don't have a lot of time left today. I got my mother's birthday party to go to. We're uh, taking her out to eat. Celebrating a couple of weeks past her birthday so when everybody could get together. And we're all going out for a family dinner and, and uh, celebrate her birthday. So we're doing that early tonight. So I only have a couple hours today. And then uh, we're going to go ahead and um, work on it tomorrow. But the plan is, but I'm going to get it up. And I want to look at the uh, adjuster sleeves and see where see where the tie rods are landing. Because the tie rods and the adjuster goes on. Here's a tie rod, here's a tie rod, inner outer. And when you do that adjuster, they do this. And if these are adjusted, which is what it looks like to me. Um, and, and from what I've read, a lot of guys have the same problem um, where everything's towed in because the adjusters are on the back. So if you shrink them, it'll bring the toe out, which means if you tighten up, it'll pull them in, the backs in, which will point the fronts out. That's how adjusting alignment works. From what I've heard and from what these look like, they're adjusted a lot, almost all the way in, which means these are going to butt. And if these butt, there's no more going in, right? So we need shorter tie rods. Well, I think what we need to do, and what some of the guys have talked about, is just take an inch and a half off each tie rod. And then that's three inches in the middle here. And that'll give me three inches to, to go in some more. And then hopefully all their thing will work. So that comes down to taking the tie rods out, cutting them, Champering the end so threads in prop properly. Make sure the threads stay cleaned. Put them all back together. It'll be a little bit of a job, but uh, that's what we got to do. We're gonna drop this thing. A two-inch drop spindles. Everybody talking about unless you get the real, real expensive ones. Uh, and even then, um, I, I, I haven't. I didn't read anything about those guys. Were like, I'll get these, and you know, should be all right. Four or five hundred bucks versus two hundred bucks. Yeah. I'm not opposed to cutting the ends off of a couple of tie rods. All right. Let me get this thing up in the air and uh, we'll take a look at it and see if that's what we're going to have to do. Right. As you can see, there's no threads left on that end or that end. So I'm assuming this is already bottomed out in the middle. I'm gonna try to turn this and see if I, what I can see. I'm gonna have to take it off completely. We all know how easily the these all came off. I got the right tool now though. Not a lot of room. I just have to deal with it in the morning. Maybe come over tonight after a heat. Man, let me see if I can get this tie rod end off the wheel side first and we'll go from there. Alright, let's try this again. Boy, I love filming and then your freaking camera goes, does something weird and you're not filming. So, anyways, I got the sleeve off of my tie rod ends. See, I already moved all this stuff. Okay, the joys of the joys of uh, YouTubing. Tire was towed in. I've moved it now. Okay, um, if I can tape the other side, videotape the other side, maybe I'll do it. But I gotta explain what's pressure in my head. You know, this was towed in. It was all wrong. I couldn't adjust the tie rods anymore because the sleeve was bottomed out. I was told online that the tie rod ends are too long. Now with the new drop spindles. They, and you can't adjust them. You got to adjust the back side of the tire in to get it straight like it is now. I got it straight. And when I took the sleeve off, and I just measured it, there was an inch and 13 sixteenths between the tie rod end, between the two tie rod ends, the inner and outer. I just measured it, but no, I didn't film, so I didn't show you. Uh, thought it was. And then I moved the tire. So what I'm gonna do? I think the tire is pretty straight now. It's gonna have a little toe in. Um, 
and that's fine. I'm gonna give myself maybe a quarter of an inch extra to play around. But what we got now, I roughly lined up with the four. And so we, we, we need an inch to make, we need roughly an inch because we took up 13 sixteenths. Let's just call it, it was two inch gap, but it wasn't. It was an inch and 13 sixteenths. And now that I'm, I'm relatively straight, um, and again, they said these were bottoming out. Well, they weren't, look at, they're not even close to bottoming out. What was happening was, is the sleeve's too long. And I ran out of threads at both ends, and that's as far as you can adjust it. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna clean this up real good so I can look down in here with my bore scope and get a better view. But if I got threads that go a ways in here, I'm just gonna take three quarters of an inch off each end, and that'll give me my inch that I need to adjust, and it'll leave me a quarter of an inch, so three quarters of an inch, a half inch, which would be a quarter on each side for adjustability. Um, don't think I need that much, but let me let me see. I'll weigh, measure, and clean and, and see what's going on here and then we'll go from there so that's where we're at guys I'm trying to figure out how to get this thing to go straight so i can go take take it for a spin dying to get her out of here so those of you who don't know or don't remember sleep goes here right see how much longer it is if i bottom this out on the threads there which is what it was and see how much past the threads it is there it was bottomed out so this too long and i know some of you guys are saying well just go just go uh get a shorter one the problem i got is you look up for a 56 chevy it's going to show you this one i spent maybe an hour online already trying to find specs for tie rod ends um what thread size is a 56 chevy what's the thread pitch what's the bolt size um if i know that then may and you know then i can get and I was thinking of buying new tie rod ends. Then you need to know what the chamfer is for the tie rod ball joint itself. Well, now all I need to know is the shaft size. Because then I can buy, maybe buy a, a sleeve for it. I know the guys over at Advance, which are really close to me here. I might be able to go over there and, and look up a couple for, I don't know, an early muscle car, like a 60s muscle car might be shorter. Um, and, that, and that might be the way to go. Now that I know there's plenty of room and that the, the tie rods themselves aren't bottoming out, but the sleeve is. But if all I have to do is cut a half inch, three sixteenths of an inch off the ends of this sleeve, that's what we do. We're doing this on the budget, guys. You know, they want These used to be nine bucks a piece. They're like 22 now. That's 44, one for each side. Again, not a lot of money, but it all adds up. I mean, I'm saving 40 bucks here, 100 bucks there, 100 bucks there. 300 bucks there on all this little stuff. At the end of it, you can fix your car if you have 1,500 bucks to spend and everything normally costs you two grand, but you can save five, 600 bucks. Guess what? Now you can afford to fix your car. Now you can afford to customize it. Now you can afford to do the next thing. So you do it on a budget. That's what we do. That's what I do around here. At least what I try to do. And still be safe, you know. All of these old tie rod ends, I, I took them out. I showed you it earlier. Uh, they're all very tight yet. The only thing wrong is the boots are a little cracked, but they're still pliable. They're still holding grease in there. Um, and I said it before and I'll say it again. For those of you that haven't heard me, I put new, I put new ball joints in my S10 and six months later, the rubber was dry rotting and falling out of them. AC Delco brand. These are the original ones in here from 1956 and the rubber ain't dry rotted yet. It's got, each one of them's got a little crack on them where the grease is coming up. But other than that, it's holding grease. And they're, they're not loose. They're all got the right amount of play. Why would you replace that? Just to replace it with something you know that I know damn well. From what I've been running into recently with the crap and shit that goes on from China to here. Why would I replace it with something brand new that in six months is going to be garbage? And I'm not even driving it that much. Versus something that's been on there for... 
almost 70 years, 68 years. I know my dad never replaced the ball joints on this. The cotter pins look original. So, why would you guys? And even if they're not bone original, I've been in my family for 40 plus years, okay? That means they were replaced sometime prior to that 40 years with quality stuff that's lasted 40 years, okay? Why change it? And then end up with garbage that you have to change again in a year. Stupid, in my opinion. So, what we're gonna do, clean them up, lube them up, sleeve them up, put them into use. So, I need some adjustability because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get these by eyeball where I want up in the air. And I'm gonna drop it on the ground. But I'm gonna do my string trick, which you put a string down the side of the vehicle and then you measure when you get down here that you know you're perfectly straight you measure the inside of the rim and the inside of the rim to the string and I give myself an 18th of an inch boop, that way toe in 18th of an inch toe out so that's a 16th of an inch I sorry 16th of an inch both ways which is a total of an eighth of an inch movement and that is good enough to drive on without an issue. And if everything's good after, good after the test drive, then I'll take it to the, uh, the alignment shop and actually get it aligned proper. Um, but the last time I did that, took it to the alignment shop, and the guy was like, is there a reason or the tires wearing? I'm like, no, I got brand new tires. I got brand new, all brand new suspension in it. I just eyeballed it and then did the string trick. And he's like, dude, you, your alignment was, I mean, we had to adjust it but it was within specs. We moved it a little bit to make it dead in the specs. So it's a good, easy way with these cars are simple. And I'm, I want them to check the caster because of the drop spindles. And, uh, and they'll make sure that that's correct too. But the caster to me looks fine, it really does. Everything looks like it's sitting good. So. We'll just make sure the thrust angle and all that stuff that everything's just lined up exactly like it should. And it's, you know, it's over 185 bucks. But good enough to get her done. All right, let me uh, clean up these oh sleeves. I'm gonna throw them in my parts washer and uh, let them soak for a little bit. I'm gonna get the other one off. I'm gonna get this one soaking, get the other one off. And uh, yeah, figure out if I'm gonna be able to cut them or not, how much thread there is. So I'll be back. A few moments later. Well, that's good news. Um, I don't know if it has to do with this being a factory power assist vehicle, but uh, check this out. I have a shorter sleeve on this side. That sleeve is a lot shorter. Yeah, so I don't have to mess with that one. I'll just loosen it up and tow it in. Tow it out. <laughs> looks like I got enough room. There's more than enough room there on both sides. That side looks like it's got actually more thread. So if for some reason this bottom's out, sucking it in. I can uh, take the tie rod off and turn it in so I can even up the threads as long as they're not bottomed out in there, which they shouldn't be. So. All right. That's a, that's a bonus for today, at least. So I only have to deal with one. All right. This is my dusty little hole that I have. Um, I am going to cut three quarters of an inch off each end of this using the band saw. I like this little guy, it's good stuff. Um, and I don't push hard, I just let, it, let the weight of it, the weight of my hand kind of let it walk through there and the blade last longer. Doesn't burn anything up. Yes, it would cut a lot faster than that if I pushed harder. And no, it wouldn't really hurt anything. Find that happy medium, but I just, my blades last a lot longer doing this, and I'm not impatient. And this isn't really that hot now. Push through, it gets hot. This will get hot. 
just a little chamfer. No rough edges. That's it. First things first. What side is what? Because there's a left thread and a right thread. There we go. <laughs> first time. about where we were before the cutting. So. Problem is that the threads don't go all the way through, so I don't know. So I think this is gonna come off. I'm gonna take a three quarters of an inch off that. Maybe an inch. Same on the other side. So. Because I can already feel it's bottoming. That it's bottoming out. There's no reason to. Yeah, it's way too tight. So. That's about where it was last time. That's alright. That's why they call it customizing and not assembly. That's why hot rods that aren't really hot rods that aren't really, you know, people don't think of as, oh my, you didn't do a lot. Well, there's a lot that goes into just basicness. Hot rodding is customizing. And this is customizing. Customizing parts to fit with aftermarket parts. Customizing isn't always cool what you see, but it is the end result of everything compiled together. First one's first. Hang on. Yep. About where it was. Take it off. All right. Three quarters of an inch off both sides of the sleeve. You saw that. I didn't have to show you doing it again. Exact same process to do it off the tie rod itself. Now let's see if I got enough room. Now I got that in. I'm gonna throw a little paint on there and that should be good. I'll we'll have to do a little final adjusting. That should help. Fix a, fix what we got there going on. Gotta grab a couple of screws for the, um, oh, for that adjuster sleeve. It's a little, it's the screws that tighten everything up starting to strip old so get that buttoned up and uh we'll be ready to take her on to the next part which is taking her for a spin so getting close guys takes forever you know take her for a spin it's starting to get hot out now this video has been made over the course of a couple of months it was only supposed to be a couple of weeks been a couple of months uh, finances, things of that nature. So waiting on parts, waiting on things. Um, so yeah, we'll take it for a spin and then, uh, make sure everything's copacetic and we'll just have to wait, do some detailing on it. Like, and subscribe. You'll be notified when we're working on new cool projects. All right. Thanks guys. Bad Rat Garage. And don't forget. Don't wait for your project to be perfect to enjoy it. Do a little bit. Get it out, drive it around. Remind yourself why you're, you like it. Get motivated. Put it in the garage and do the next thing. Until next time, guys. See ya.